Okay, welcome to the first proper test of Dank Cam, which in this case is going to be a triple deck tour, I guess. So, you can see, Game Genic, big boy. So, peeling off the bottom layer, two decks in here. Both of them actually fully untested, but uh, shush. Let's put that one to the side. Start with the Pokemon one, which is probably out of date. So, three copies of Executor, three Bulbasaur, an Ivysaur, and three Venusaur, two Apom, two Ambipom, two Rattata, two Raticate. So, this database of the Executors are in there for consistency and for growing tall, which basically, if it works, allows me to pretty quickly turbo up either full tilt fling, later either turbo up full tilt fling, or immediately all the counters out for super fang. And then uh Venusaur is basically there for the back row, so that I have the potential of a free boss zords every turn along with sleep and poison to help prevent counterplay. Support them. We have Four rare candy to help with the evolution. Three incubators. Two XP shares that I, might, that I might end up cutting at some point. Two copies of Panic Mask. You may recall this from the Quest for the Mask series. It lasted exactly one video. Evolution Incense. Three copies. Basically the same reason as a rare candy. Four copies of Switch. So you basically quickly uh, switch stuff. Two Quick Balls. Two ordinary rubs for recycling, two professors research, and three shoners because budget professors research. Four double turbo energy because again that basically lets me get to make radicates online quicker, and then another McGrass because I don't need the other attack on the radicates. Like I said, fully untested. It might suck. Who knows? Who's to say? I'll find out at some point. Yeah, my goal was just built something entirely using Pokemon from the Go expansion, which is also what this mat's from, so I'd call that a success. Let's drop this back in here, pull that off in the corner, and get to the Yu-Gi-Oh deck. So, let's uh, set the extra deck aside for the moment. Three copies of Shari, three Shari Red, three Akura, three Shirao, three Uni, two Supper Spot, two Catch the Day, and three Daily Special. Basically, the full gun can. You can probably guess half of the extra deck from this alone. And then, because, because Sushi is a pretty good, is basically a good um, engine for getting, building rank 4s. There's some Utopia support, Arm Stage and Ascended Stage, two Change Tactics, an XD's Energy, Glorious Numbers, two Halfway to Forever, which in combination with some other stuff in the deck can let me play the entire turn on my opponent's turn. Which is very funny when it happens, but it sucks to be them. Uh, two XD's block, which is basically um, well, XD's general budget solemn. Two unexpected die. Two piercing the darkness. This actually pairs very well with all uh, oh, ships in general. If you build basically if you build something with Shari, summoning Shari gets you a draw, and then swing with a with whatever you build gives you an attack boost. Gives you an attack boost. Removal package then, Effect Veiler, Nibiru, Harpies, and Solemn Strike. I know it's missing some staples, but that's because I don't own them. Extra deck then, two Akura, two Shirao, and two Uni, because I never needed more than two of any of them in a single game, and thanks to Daily Special I have Recycling, so I'm unlikely to. Two Utopia, and one Lightning, which is one of the only cards I've seen that look good in Gold Rare. <laughs> Utopic Future, two copies. Gaga Gaga Magician and UDF. Then Small Royal Package or Silent Honor Arc and Sky Blaster Musketeer. So, UDF is basically in there because it's entirely possible to build two Sioux ships in one turn which meet the summoning requirements. Which is uh, all very convenient, really. Plus, the uh, high base attack of Sioux ship lets me. Pretty reliably 
play through a uh, Nibiru. At least in theory. I've, I've used it a lot of Master Duel, very well, a version of this, with like a few things swapped, switched out, a few staples. Honestly, the current plan for the final deck is to swap out the uh, budget Solemn for actual Solemn, and then just drop in three copies of Ash. Onto the middle draw then of Ye Vault. And this is where we get interesting ish. With the side deck so far, we go to Ogre and Snow Rabbit that I pulled from that Gold Tin video. Solemn Strike, again. Effect Veiler, again. There goes to Admiral, just in case I need more card draw. A second copy of Harpies. Two Rescue Rabbits, another Exodus Energy, and another Exodus Block. And then have these five, or well, these four Phyrexia tokens, which are more for the Magic deck, but we'll get to in a moment. These came with the um, all the one fat pack. I actually plan on getting some games in with these right after this video. The uh, tournament, the Pokemon Go flip coin. Hey! Standard D20, probably good for randomizing stuff. Odds I win, evens you lose. Okay, hang on. Let's be smart about this. Odds I win, evens you lose. And I win. And still win. Okay, cool. Let's get these quickly back in there. The coin. The D20. Uh, there's a set of damage die for Pokemon that may admittedly also be necessary for a for another magic deck I'm building, because I know for a fact that I, I can create... Uh, 20 each of two different token types in a single turn, potentially, so... Yep. That's in there. Tournament legal D6 for Pokemon reasons. Hey, I win again. Poison counter for obvious reasons. My opponent's gonna need that more than me, hopefully. And then... All of the little Phyrexia tokens, which can be used for... Eh, either poison counters or plus one plus ones in the uh, deck with the exception of the one shield token that doesn't really have a use, but's in there. Because I guess you never know. So, with that done, onto the third layer, and the one I'm hoping to get some use out of today. Uh, after this, I'm trying out Spell Table for the first time, hence I've got the uh, camera set up for it already. <sighs> My Commander deck, fully custom. Commander here is Glisser, Herald of Predation. At the beginning of combat on your turn, choose one. Incubate two twice. Transform and uh, transform all incubator tokens you control. And for to control, gain first strike and death touch until end of turn. So she's a 3 5 for 5, but the stat line isn't great, but she has the option to give herself and all my other Phyrexians first strike and death touch. Which more than makes up for it. Oh yeah, tokens real quick. I've just got uh, 10 incubator tokens. No matter the fact they cost 2 to transform, and they turn into a. Uh, zero zero Thyrexian, but they always going to play a plus one plus one counters, hence why I have the counters. So, we have then Glissa, as previously mentioned. Billy a Skull Dollar, for some Death Touch, Eye Call Drinker, Venerated Rock Priest, Dune Mover, Black Billy Rat, Pestilent Siphoner, Scheming Aspirant, Branch Blight Stalker, Canker Bloom, Copper Long Legs, which is probably one of a couple cards that I'm likely to cut when I figure out something better. Lotus Cobra, just for some ramp. Saki Steve, again for ramp. Wall of Roots, because again, this one might get cut at some point. Uh, Bloated Processor as an emergency sack outlet. So if my ball gets swiped, I can build something real big. Pump Master again, eh, might get cut at some point. Lorak, Eternal Witness, which is just for some uh, recycling. There's enough black in there that I may as well get some uh, reduce on my ATB triggers. I call it Basilisk. I guess for another power team with Death Touch. Call Prowler. Converter Beast. Plague Nurse. Venomous Brutalizer. Necrogen Rock Priest. Another honestly pretty good one. I can basically give anything with Toxic Death Touch, more importantly, it doubles poison counters to players when they're hit with toxic stuff. Gulping Scrap Trap. Nimraiser Paladin. Contaminant Grafter. Tyrannax Atrocity. 
Light Titan, Injector Crocodile, yeah, another one I'm less confident about. But at least flows into a 3 3. Toxic Nim, eh, again. This one might get dropped at some point, I don't know. Glitter's Retriever, Paladin of Predation. And onto the instance, we have Village Rights, Nature's Claim, Noxious Revival, a very fun one. Infernal Grasp for removal, go for the throat for also removal. Return to Nature for removal again. Abrupt Decay for again. Uncounterable removal of cheap stuff that could get uh, pretty big. Dismember, again, cheap removal. Beast Within, Harrow, Crows and Grip, Petrify, Second Harvest. Very powerful card. I do hope someday to add uh, Doubling Season. But this basically lets me double all my Incubator tokens, which is pretty strong. Death Sprout, removal combined with Ramp, Return of the Wild Speaker. Merciless Repurposing, again, the removal that also gives me another Incubator, Drown an Icor, Traumatic Revelation, Regrowth, one of the sorceries now, as you've probably noticed. Infectious Inquiry, Cultivate, Glistening Dawn, potentially very strong. This basically lets me incubate, uh, X, this means that lets me incubate as many 2 2 Phyrexians, or oh, Phyrexians, this basically gives me as many 2 2 Phyrexian incubators as I have lands, which is rather good. That emergence, basically free recycling of any one stuff this time. <laughs> Casualties of War lets me do a whole bunch of stuff at once. Reclamation, more free recycling. Gives you completion. Phyrexian Arena, extra card draw. Blade Burgeoning, Phyrexian Scriptures as a as an emergency nuke. Turn one, I get a plus one plus one counter on something that also makes it an artifact. Turn two, I destroy all non-artifact creatures. Turn three, I exile all opponents' graveyards. And if I'm able to drop this and proliferate in the same turn, I can potentially get some major wipe going on with very little chance of uh, return. Tangle Skyline for... Honestly, oh, it's a good utility card. I get to incubate five, gain five life, and all my Phyrexians get reach. Manifold Key. Tide Creature can't block this turn. Very good for poison. Solar Ring, because you have to these days. Arcane Signet, Commander's Sphere. And the lands, Command Tower, Path of Ancestry, because it's a tribal deck. Evolving Wilds, Rogue's Passage, so that I can again make things unblockable. But you could bog for Emergency Exiling, Dark Moss Bridge, Foul Orchard, Guilt Leaf Palace. Eh, not for me, but there's, there's enough elves that have a chance of playing this untapped, I reckon. Golgari Guildgate and Rot Farm, Hissing Quagmire, Jungle Hollow, Tainted Wood, Wooden Cemetery, and then. Nine Forest, and Nine Swamp. So, yeah, that that's, uh, that's what I'm working with here. First deck, very excited to use it. And I'm going to go actually play some games with it, hopefully on Spell Table. I'll see you guys in a bit.